reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the temple police had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather, rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Reading from the book of Revelation, John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. 
To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all of the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Let us now stand and join in singing our hymn before the gospel, hymn 194. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, 
are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. The resurrected Jesus appears to the disciples on the night of the resurrection, and amazingly, he breathes on them. That may be seeming like a strange thing to do, but it calls to mind that second chapter of Genesis, the older of the two creation stories in Genesis, which is a wonderful story of God's intimacy with God's newly created human beings. God makes the first human beings out of the very dirt of the earth, and then God lovingly breathes his very spirit, his life, his breath, into them. The word in Hebrew is much more inclusive than breath. It does involve spirit and creativity. God shared something of God's self with the first human beings. And so Jesus also marks a new beginning, a new creation, if you will. The disciples have the spirit of the living God breathed into them again. Because they have an important job to do. He's commissioning them to go forth into the world and make a difference in that world. And what a difference they made. When you think about it, this was a small group of fairly inept men and women who really were not very important in society, but within a matter of a few generations, they had spread the Christian gospel throughout the Roman world. How did they do that? They did it by the uniqueness of their behavior. It wasn't their belief, other than their belief in the resurrected one, that was the earmark of this early church. It was their behavior, how they treated other people, how they loved others and made sacrifices for others. This was what communicated the love of God and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to the world. In this service, we have a number of people, most of them sitting behind me, so I will be turning from time to time to address them, as well as the rest of the congregation, who are being confirmed or received. And although I won't be actually, hopefully, breathing on you when I do the uh, confirmation, because you'll be standing rather than kneeling. You'll be standing here at the font, which is the symbol of the promises that were first made that you would be commissioned in the service of Christ and his church. And this ratification justifiably takes place here. I won't be breathing on you, but I will be placing my hands on your head and making the sign of the cross with the chrism, the same kind of oil that was used in their baptism to mark them not simply as Christ's ambassadors, but to commission them into a needy world. How do people come to know Jesus in our own day? Well, they can read the pages of scripture, although if you haven't grown up in a church, you might never pick up the scriptures. But even so, you can read about what Jesus did, what he said, where he went, in the pages of scripture. Or you might actually learn about him through some fairly decent biblical movies, some of which were available about a week ago on television. But it is hard to create a relationship on the basis of a book. Relationships are among human beings. The 
primary way in which people learn about Jesus in our own day is through you and me. Or, perhaps they don't learn. The things that they learn about Jesus' love, his self-sacrifice, his being willing to be there for other people, his propensity to care for people regardless of their status, and his desire to bring all persons into a more joyful, obedient life to God are all things that need to be communicated by you and me. People will know that we are Christians by the power of our love, by the way in which we enfold them, the way in which we treat them, the way in which we meet out mercy, the ways in which we defend ourselves against and the bigotry and hatred and all of the other things that detract from people knowing that they are already loved children of God. They'll know we are Christians by the degree to which we value our environment and are willing to make sacrifices so that the world may flourish rather than suffer. They will know we are Christian by the ways in which we go to the map for other people making sure that justice abounds and that persons are respected as loved children of God. To the degree that we can do this self-sacrificially, we will in fact communicate Christ to the world. Each baptized Christian is called to be an ambassador of Christ. And each Christian has been empowered with special gifts from God, which enables her or him to be that kind of Christian person in some special way. But no one of us has all of the talents or all of the abilities or all the knowledge that is necessary to be Christian in the world, which is why community is so important. You and I have specific talents, but you and I have also weaknesses and blind spots. We need other people in the community to cover for us, to compensate for our weaknesses, even while we share our strengths to compensate for their weaknesses. So while it is a tall order to be a Christian in the world and to communicate the love of Christ, it is possible to do it in the community. After the compromands have rejected evil, which is a part of their baptismal covenant, and after they have recommitted themselves to Jesus Christ, everyone in the church will be invited to stand and rehearse the baptismal covenant. And even if you haven't been baptized, the responses can't hurt you. So I encourage you to think in terms of saying them anyway, because they are good roadmaps regardless of what faith tradition you might come from about how to make a difference in the world. After the Apostles' Creed, which is an ancient creed dating from about the year 150, there will be five questions that the bishop asks. And each of the five questions has something to do with how it is that you and I can be Christ for the world. And the first question is, will you show up Will you show up in a place like this on a regular basis to be strengthened by one another? Now, of course, because it's in the Book of Common Prayer, I won't actually say, will you show up? I will instead say, uh, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and the prayers? But the bottom line is, will you show up? Showing up is a lot more important than you might think. Looking out, I am aware that I am not chronologically the oldest person in this church. But the fact that I have been ordained for 52 years and served for the most part large congregations and a large diocese, I would be willing to bet that I have been at more church services than anyone else in this church. And I want to be quite honest, especially with our young people, sometimes they're just damn boring. <laughs> so having gotten that out and the honesty of it and the laughter makes it clear that you know what I mean sometimes you get here and or some 
but certainly not here. But sometimes you get <laughs> sometimes you get to the church and you go to the service and you think, why did I drag myself out of bed for that? I'm not getting anything out of this. But I can honestly say over those 52 years, those have been a minority of services. I can't tell you how many times as a lay person, as a priest, as a bishop, I have been in a place like this, not even being able to put a finger on what my spiritual need was. But in the context of that service, that need has been wonderfully met. It might be in something sung by the choir. It might be in a phrase from scripture that I have heard a thousand times and suddenly hear it for the first time in a new way. It might put a finger on things that have been plaguing my heart, or it might ease my pain, or it might ease my sense of loss, or it might in another way simply involve me in community, getting me out of myself and into something much larger. There are so many ways that by showing up, God works in us. And yes, it isn't every Sunday. So if you're not familiar with church, if you're here as a visitor, you should give it a try. I'd be willing to bet that in a place like this, God will show up for you on a regular basis, just as I have found God has spoken to me, and it has made all the difference. So having shown up, the bishop then asks, if you will resist evil. In my long life, I don't remember a time in which I was more aware of how palpable evil is in our world. In the world in general, in this nation, some of it in high places. We need to commit ourselves to resist evil. And that's not just not doing evil ourselves, it's speaking out, speaking again, uh, speaking out against hypocrisy, speaking out against lying and deceit, speaking out against the things that dehumanize people, speaking out against bigotry and hatred. We need to be actively living out and speaking out the gospel of Jesus Christ. But then the rest of that promise goes on, equally important, saying that when we fall away, we'll return. And that's a reminder that God is always more forgiving than we imagine. God is always welcoming us into a place like this. Not with a lot of strings attached. A few weeks ago, if you were here in church, you heard the very familiar parable of the prodigal son. God is like the father in that parable welcoming the Son, not expecting a great deal, but simply welcoming us back into the fold. The third promise is often seen by people as the pivotal one, proclaiming by word and example the good news of God in Christ. Well, if you've ever had a preschooler, or if you currently have one, or if you have a grandson or granddaughter who is a preschooler, you know that preschoolers are absolutely expert at ferreting out hypocrisy. If what you are saying is not compatible with how you are behaving and what you're doing, the preschooler will be the first to point it out to you. Something about going to school breeds that out of them. Unfortunately, they stop being quite as honest and blatant about it. But you know what I mean. The operative word here is not by word. Words are very easy. Action is what makes the difference. It's by word and action, but the action is what in fact convinces people that we are Christians and gets their attention. The next and the last promise is the one that I used to think was easy. When you seek and serve Christ in others, loving your neighbor as yourself. And I thought it was easy because I have always been somebody who enjoyed serving. I undoubtedly became a priest 52 years ago because I enjoyed serving. I grew up in a family where my parents were very much involved in the community, very much involved in the church. They did a lot of volunteering and they loved to serve. And I learned as a young person that I felt good about myself when I was serving other people. Yes, serving is the easy part. 
Seeking Christ in every other person is the hard part of that. Every person. The person we avoid at school because they are unpopular or they are different from us. The person in our office who, when they approach our desk, our heart sinks. The person who we see in the aisle of the uh, supermarket and we're very tempted to steer our cart in the opposite direction. Sometimes even the person who approaches us at coffee hour and we at least momentarily think of running to the bathroom. Um, there are people in every community who we find difficult to take. Even in our families, often if we're honest, there are members of our families who we are not as really pleased with. Seeking Christ in the people we find it difficult to imagine Christ could even be in is the important thing. In our own political environment, seeking Christ in the very person who is diametrically on the opposite side of the political spectrum is a big challenge for most Americans, and yet it is a challenge we are going to have to face into. Somehow, having the ability to look for the good in the person, not in a Pollyannish way, but in a sense of understanding that, that person as much as I and the love child of God, and that somewhere there is the spark of the divine in that person. If we can seek that, it may form some transformation in our own lives and our own prejudices. It may never change the other person, and we don't have to like the person to love them. One of the fallacies of our culture is we equate love with warm, fuzzy feelings, but in fact, there are lots of people who I can honestly say, I dislike, and some of them fairly intensely, but I can love them. Because it's not warm fuzzies. I would go to the mat for that person. I would make sure that that person's rights were defended. I would make sure that that person could speak his or her mind. I would make sure that that person was dealt with with respect. Respect is sadly missing especially here in this area of our country, in our political environment. People talk at each other and to each other as if they did not need to respect each other as human beings. If you can rise to respect the other person, defending their rights and loving them in the way that Jesus means love, it will make a difference in you and possibly in others and in the world. And the final promise is that we will work for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being, which I've already covered, basically. Working for justice and peace is at the very heart of Jesus' ministry. Jesus spent a great deal of his time among the marginalized and disadvantaged. It would be fallacious to assume that Christians in our culture could spend less time among such people or have less interest in seeing justice done to them. Our Lord sets the tenor of our working for justice and peace. So, if some of you back there are having second thoughts, this is probably the best time to decide not to sit up on the stage, but to go sit in the congregation. But I'm hoping you won't change your mind. It is a tall assignment. God is calling you to make sacrifices. Nothing in this life that is worthwhile comes without making sacrifices. All of you know that in many ways. You've already done it for education. You've already done it for sports. You've already done it in so many ways. You understand that to get what you really want to have and to get what is really worthwhile, you have to make some sacrifices. So the good news is you're not left alone making these sacrifices. You're here together as a group of people in a wonderfully active church. But you're also making the promises, I will, with God's help. And none of us can do these things without God's help. So we will have the resurrected Lord, in a sense, breathing on us in our journey, breathing into us a sense of new life, bringing breathing on us when we, our hearts feel faint, breathing on us to enable us to really carry on this ministry. And as if that weren't enough, later in the service, 
we will come forth here to this place, either to the altar rail or down here, and we will reach out our hands to receive the bread of life. And the Jesus who is resurrected will actually be in us, living in our bodies in a special way to walk with us, so that we are never alone or beyond his purview. And then as if that weren't enough, also we will be doing it with a wonderful cloud of witnesses of other people in this church and beyond this church who are cooperating together. If you can make this commitment, and if you understand that it will mean making some sacrifices, I promise you, you will find a new fulfillment of your life. You will find joy that is deeper than any joy you have ever thus far experienced. You will find a sense of well-being. You will find yourself. And in finding yourself, you will find your place in God's plan. And in all that, God will give you great joy. Our service continues on page 415. This is the one place where you all need your prayer books, except for the uh, young people who are being confirmed, or the not-so-young people who are being confirmed. Um, they have it all printed out, but our service continues on page 415. The candidates will now be presented. I present these persons for confirmation, and I present these persons received into this community. Will those persons please rise? These questions are designed specifically for those who have just been introduced. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Let's try that again. Um, <laughs> that was, I was just a little too hesitant. Um, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. And by God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and my Lord. Those who are able, please rise. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example 
the good news of God in Christ. I am the Lord of God's Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I am the Lord of God's Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will do that. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. And keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. In a moment, the individuals who are being confirmed and received will be coming forward. And if you're here in the congregation on their behalf, parent, godparent, friend, relative, we ask that you come forward also, but be very careful. There are two steps up onto this level. They'll be confirmed here by the font, um, but I'd like you to stand around them. No one makes a decision of faith without a community of support. And if you are part of that support system, you should be here standing with them. You can put a hand on a shoulder or on an arm or just stand there in solidarity for each of those persons. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Augusta Lee, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. carefully up the stairs. <coughs> Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Lillian Messick, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. God bless you.
Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Willa Carolyn, with your holy with your, Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Willa Carolyn, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O oh Lord, this your servant Vivian Tess with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Emmett Oaks with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Finn Thomas, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, William Thomas, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, daily increasing your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. God bless you. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Jacob, William, with your heavenly grace. He may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Bless you. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Elizabeth Carroll with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Eleanor Hunter, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant John Preston with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen.
defend, O Lord, this your servant Catherine Dawson with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Megan Grace, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Olivia Baines with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant John Bernard with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes in your everlasting kingdom. Amen. John, what was it? Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Kenan Robert, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant John David with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Leighton Joseph, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Kurt Montgomery, to your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant Leah Reeves with your heavenly grace. 
she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Heather Maria, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Charles Joseph, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Yes, please do. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Linda Kay, with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes into your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Hannah Elise, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this community. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Bruce Allen, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Erica Dornfried, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand be ever over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
thinking about our visit today, I was reminded that in 1809, when we first were founded, our, con our congregation and the first building were consecrated not by a bishop of Virginia, but by your predecessor, Bishop Claggett. Oh, we made a visit. So this is a long connection after all these things. That's great. So welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> it's a joy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's welcome you. Thank you.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he is one for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray and say together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now in the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Minister to the afflicted. Share your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.